Hey, MF 2022. So, yes, we're here to explore metaphysics uh, via memes and a sprinkling of pop culture. Yay, we have slides. That's always a good start. <laughs> Before we get started, is everybody having a good time? Any first timers here? Yeah, awesome. Okay, well, hi. Uh, my meet space designation is Cara Langford, but a lot of you know me as Terra, and I'm happy to be known as Terra. And I'm here to ruin the rest of the festival for you. So I know I said this in my write-up, but just in case you've stumbled across this talk because you were on the way to something else, or you were grabbing a coffee or whatever, let me be quite clear. This may break your brain. If you do not want a broken brain, please leave now. No, really. <laughs> if you're not looking for an existential crisis, leave now. So my inspiration for this talk is that during my time in academia, woo, mature students represent uh, I've had several existential crises uh, while trying to understand the bits of philosophy that I need in order to be able to argue my research decisions. So I thought, hey, why not share this with a field of my favorite people at my favorite festival so they can all hate me forever for giving them their own existential crises? Last chance to leave. Okay. We're going in, you were warned. So let's start with philosophy. And the word philosophy literally meaning a love of wisdom. But basically, this is about wanting to know stuff about stuff. And studying it using questions, critical discussion, uh, rational argument, and Ali Barosh memes. Yay. So, you are probably thinking about white men in togas yelling at each other right now, because you've come to a talk on philosophy. But in reality, philosophy, you know, has been developed worldwide. There's Middle Eastern philosophy, there's Eastern Asian philosophy, there's African philosophy, there's Indigenous American philosophy, there's lots of philosophy. But a lot of what we're going to talk about today is a Western perspective on these things, because that's largely what I've experienced and learned in my time in academia, which shows we still need to do more work to decolonize the curriculum. Thank you. So, philosophy sits at the root of what we see as science. And each of these disciplines can be traced as trying to discern meaning within a given context. So, for example, maths, maths people, maths village, do not yell at me. I don't care. Is ultimately just a bunch of made up symbols that we've collectively agreed upon to represent certain contexts. They don't actually exist independently of humans. Yes, horses can count, but only by our definition of what counting is in the first place. But more on that later when we move on to epistemology, what is true, what is truth, yada, yada, yada. So metaphysics, which is the kind of bit of philosophy we're going to look at in this talk. Uh, Metaphysics meaning, according to Aristotle, after the physics. And metaphysics is about what is reality and what is reality like? That's not a big question to answer, right? Can, can we nail that here at EMF 2022? Surely the biggest and best collection of nerds we can find, right? If we can't do it, then no one can. Yeah? That's what I reckon. I overthink, therefore I over am. Anybody else here identify with that one? So metaphysics is a part of philosophy that attempts to clarify the fundamental notions by which people understand the world. How do we define existence, identity, time, space? Yeah, you know, just, just the big questions. So what are our beliefs about reality? In order to know what is true, 
we first have to define what is real. Now, one way to split this up is into ontology as the nature of being, theology as the nature of God, and universal science as the nature of reasoning and logic. For example, you know, contradiction. Two things cannot be true at once, except electrons that are both a wave and a particle, but not when you look at them. Uh, probably more on that later. No quantum physicists shout at me, please. So my particular interest is in, ontolo in ontology, which is the nature of being, and that's what we're going to delve into a little more. Now, at this point, I'm hoping to play you a video, but I'm not entirely sure this is going to work in this setup. We will find out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm trying to see a mouse backwards on a screen. Can I do it? Can I do it? Ooh. Now I've lost my mouse. Where is my mouse? Press K. No sound, sound guy? Laptop saying no sound. We tested this. If I press the turn the volume up button, it says no. Computer says no. We will abandon the video and do something else. It is fine. Now I have to get back to the slides, looking at the screen backwards. Oh, don't tell me to use keyboards. <laughs> My husband's always whining at me for that. There we go, that'll do. All right. Anyway, uh, if you've seen Human Traffic, it's the bit where Moff's talking to reality uh, because he's hammered it a bit too hard. And uh, reality is represented by Joe Brand, which is a little bit terrifying. Anyway, so, ontology. Ontology is about our view of the world. What is reality? Um, I was going to say here, I didn't say my talk was suitable for small humans, but just in case, the video contains swears. That doesn't matter now, because you can't hear the swears, so it's fine. All right. Now my clicker clucker is going to not work. Hello, clicker clucker. Don't we just love computers, aren't they the best? There we go. So, there are lots of different perspectives and views on the philosophy of science and on metaphysics, and again, non-Western philosophies, but I'm going to generalize a little for time's sake. So, we're going to start talking about the ontology of objectivism, objectivism or realism. Uh, now, realism believes there is absolute reality. Social phenomena and their meanings exist completely independently of people. There is a actual tangible reality. Sure, sure. Uh, this isn't the best meme for this. I just like it. Uh, but my talk ended up a bit short, so we're going to roll with it. Critical realism. Critical realism is what we see is shaped. Get it? by history or culture and our experiences. So while there may be an objective reality, critical realists claim that essentially our ability to access it is only ever partial. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. It's basically null sector, isn't it, actually? Uh, constructivism or relativism. Reality, according to relativists or constructivists, is relative to the context and the individual experiencing it. So social phenomena and their meaning are produced via social interaction and are in a constant state of revision. So essentially, in constructivism or relativism, what we're saying is there is no external or objective reality. It is always only existing, that was a good sentence, through the context of our experience of it. I don't have a lot to say about this, I just thought it was a bit terrifying. 
Um, but this is a good example of relativism, um, as each of us as prisoners only having one view through our window, and each view is different and could be a hologram, and there is no way to know whether that's true or not. Cool. Good, good. Little check in here. Everyone all right? Because it's going to get weirder. Okay. So we're moving now from those concepts of ontology through metaphysics and what is reality, what is truth, the nature of space and time, etc. So this is where we're saying, okay, what is true? Epistemology comes from the words episteme, meaning knowledge, and logos, meaning reason or account. Again, we're going from the Greeks here. Um, other philosophical uh, cultural schools may differ. So once we've decided what is real, or at least have a vague idea of what may or may not be real, uh, we can then move on deciding uh, to what, what is truth, or how do we know what is true. And how do we define that? Uh, I mean, my view is we can't, or at least not definitively, uh, but I'm an interpretivist. Whoop! So, uh, yeah. Uh, how do we know what we know? How do we obtain knowledge? Um, and this again, I'm sorry, it's the Greek bros once more. Um, they sort of thought that the process of science was taking doxa, the things that we believed, and moving them into episteme, the things that we know. So, let's start looking at different types of epistemology. <laughs> I know, it's a good one, isn't it? I'm a Pisces, by the way. <laughs> Foundational, also known as empiricism, uses that objectivist ontology. So, remember, objectivism is there is a defined existing independent reality of social interactions and subjectivity. Um, they say true knowledge is obtained via unquestionable truths being deduced. Okay, then we have positivism, the natural sciences, which believes that science is objective, controllable, repeatable, independent of politics, or the researcher. But basically, positivism or natural sciences are seeking predictive results. They believe that natural science methods can be applied to social reality. Okay. Uh, and the paradigm itself is, as I said, objectivist again, so that there's an independent reality that's separate from people and it can be measured. Okay, then we have uh, relativism, relativism, aka uh, anti-foundational. And this uses that constructivist ontology. So that was the one that said that we can only perceive parts of reality due to our cultural and historical uh, timeline, essentially, and the things that we've already experienced. And this seeks understanding through uh, saying that objects of natural science and people differ, and that a subjective uh, grasp of the meaning of social action is required in order to define what is true, or what is truth, or at least what is close to it. Okay, so we've discussed the different ontological and epistemological, you can't have a drink before saying that, can you? Perspectives. So let's do a little survey. Is the cake a lie? What is cake? What is a lie? Perhaps more on that another EMF if I give a talk on ethics. And then we can all just not only be questioning reality, but also hating ourselves by discovering how terrible human beings really are. But anyway, at the moment, just a little show of hands. Who thinks that reality objectively exists? I'm looking for the positivists in the room now. Okay, okay, cool, all right. 
Who thinks we can never really know that existence is subjective and the reality that we experience can't really be independently defined? I'm doing this because I can't see. Interesting. Okay. Uh, who's coming to this talk early for the next one and has no idea why we're voting on the existential properties of cake? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, so if you've reached this point and you're now not questioning the nature of existence and reality, good for you. For the rest of us, uh, I have a few parting thoughts I'd like to end on for you to carry along with you for the rest of the day, festival, month, your life. Here's a little perspective on existence. We're all just part of an explosion that happened hard enough that it made dust think. Anybody else feel like a haunted atom? Or is that just my goth showing? <sighs> Anyone here uh, have non-sparkling anxiety as well? As after this talk, potentially the sparkling variety. Have we, in fact, at EMF 2022, created the anxiety spritzer? Okay, so uh, one more and then we're done. <laughs> uh, if you've got this far and you're still not having feelings of despair, let me point out this meme is 16 years old. You're welcome. Uh, there was supposed to be a little video to go with this that was from the Stanley Parable, but that's not working right now. But that's the bucket thing, okay? It was a joke about buckets and the Stanley Parable and now I can't do it, but it was funny. Okay, so uh, that completes our short journey around the realm of metaphysics. Uh, if you would like to know more, you can find me at the Gothic Valley Village or anywhere playing music that goes unts or bleep for the rest of the weekend. Probably null sector. So as a final note, just remember, if you add mad to a discipline, it should tell you whether or not you actually need to worry or whether you're dealing with pseudoscience. Therefore, this mad metaphysicist is signing off and, as per the introduction, uh, absolving themselves of any responsibility should you spend the remainder of the festival adding tears of existential crisis to the EMF lake. You were warned. Thank you very much. We're about 10 minutes ahead of schedule. If anyone's got any questions for Cara, we can probably do those. I've got one quick one, actually. Yeah, OK. Which is, if a teacher says, you'll never amount to anything, are they basically right, ultimately? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, if we look at uh, the fact that we are just a tiny speck on a small planet in an uncaring universe, then does it really matter? I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, anyone have any other questions? Yeah, I'm sorry we ran a bit short there no. without the videos, okay. it's kind of chunked it down a bit. But thank you ever so thank much. You very much. And do feel free to come and like, yeah, talk to me about the uh, nature of reality and the meaning of life. 42, right? It's 42. Cool. Yeah! Thank you, EMF. Cool. Thank you very much, Cara. <laughs>